Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Drones a major topic and focus at Oshkosh 2017. Those other rotorcraft converge on Muncie. Australian drone pilots face fines, jail for whale overflights. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. Oshkosh 2017 is now in the history books, and by all accounts, it was a successful as well as safe event. The annual event boasted nearly 600,000 attendees and a record number of aircraft of all types, including a number of display and demonstration UAVs. EAA this year upgraded both the drone cage and the drone pavilion, located close to their innovation buildings in a spot that was both highly visible as well as well-trafficked. Drone courses and seminars were provided throughout the week, addressing both hobby as well as commercial UAV topics and industry segments. A number of drone-related vehicles, such as the Surefly and the Kitty Hawk Flyer, were on display, while the Kitty Hawk Flyer did some limited demos in the near EAA seaplane base. FPV drone racing was also a featured event through the week, both in the enclosed drone cage on the field, as well as some evening activities at EAA's Pioneer Field, a grassy runway located behind the EAA headquarters building. Questions put to numerous attendees and spectators showed that UAV interest from sport and general aviation pilots was on the increase and some of the prejudices seen over the years is dissipating as the rest of aviation gets educated on the capabilities and realities of UAV operations. Our parent company, Aero News, will be providing some excerpts of interviews and experiences from Oshkosh 2017 shortly. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The winners of the fourth annual International Drone Photography Contest have been announced. The competition was judged on creativity, photographic quality, and in respect of the three categories by a panel of experts, including Deputy Director of Photography at National Geographic, Patrick Witte, Photo Editor Jeff Himsathis, as well as Emanuela Escali, Photo Editor of National Geographic France, and Dronestagram. The winning pictures will be published in National Geographic. The Academy of Model Aeronautics, DJI, and Fly Robotics will be presenting a public safety training workshop as part of the pre-conference offerings at Drone World Expo 2017, taking place October 3rd through the 4th at the San Jose Convention Center. The workshops will be held on Monday, October 2nd from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 1 to 4 p.m. Speakers at the workshop will include Romeo Durscher, Director of Education, DJI, North America, Bill Pritchett, Director of Education, Academy of Model Aeronautics, and Archie Stafford, Chief Technical Officer, Fly Robotics. The FAA has posted a YouTube video entitled How to Use the Unmanned Aircraft Systems Facility Maps. They ask, quote, are you filling out an airspace authorization application and wondering what the maximum altitude for flight is? The UAS facility maps can help you determine the max altitude in a certain area. Watch now to learn how you can use the maps to support your application. Look for how to use the unmanned aircraft systems facility maps on YouTube. Drone racing came to Sebring Sport Aviation Expo in January with pilots competing for a $10,000 first prize. But the event was about more than just the money, according to Chris Thomas, founder and president of MultiGP, which organized the event. Check out the Aero TV video feature in the AMA Drone Report channel at amadronereport.com. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. This week, an altogether different kind of rotorcraft than those we usually cover on the AMA Drone Report converged on AMA headquarters in Muncie, Indiana. That's right, it's time for the 2017 RC Helicopter Nets. A total of 78 competition flights were completed on just the first day, 
and featured a wide assortment of sport and scale helicopters. The competition ran from Monday through today. It started off quite a global affair with a number of international elements that featured a group of flyers who had just returned from an international FAI competition themselves. Nick Maxwell, Jamie Robertson, and Cliff and Daniel Hyatt all competed in the FAI F3C F3N World Championships in Poland last week and barely had time to catch their breaths before getting started in Muncie. Most important, in Team USA's first time competing in F3N, Jamie ended up with a podium finish at third and Nick finished fifth, pulling double duty in both F3N and F3C. An early and pleasant surprise at this year's Heli Nats was the strength of Class 1 competition. The biggest class, the aforementioned Class 1, was also the beginner class with eight entries, with AMA noting that precision helicopter flying is building strength and participation. Australian drone pilots who fly less than 100 meters over migrating whales could face large fines and jail time, according to new regulations that go into effect August 25th. The legislation is aimed at protecting the massive marine mammals from any disturbance. Drones will be limited to a 100-meter floor and a 122-meter, approximately 400 feet, ceiling under the law. The National Parks and Wildlife Service classifies any drone as an aircraft which is not allowed to fly within 300 meters from a whale or dolphin. So if a drone pilot were to try to photograph any such animal from directly overhead, they would be in violation of the 122-meter ceiling imposed for drone flights. The potential fines are $110,000 and two years in jail. A spokeswoman for the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service said that the changes in the law, quote, recognizes advances in drone technology and that their popularity is increasing. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week. Thank you.